Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Yes. Uh, any birthdays or anniversaries since we saw each other last? I didn't better speak up. Nobody got no older. <laughs> I reckon that's right. All right, if there's nothing in there. Uh, Brother Roy, would you open our worship service, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come here today. God, God, we just want your presence here today. God, we just pray for the Holy Spirit. God, just draw people this thank house. You, God, we just pray for your son down on that cross. Yes. God, we thank you for the blood here this morning. We thank you for everything you do in our lives here this morning. God, we thank you for just being with us, God, with a smile, still voice. And you talk to us, God, and you tell us, God, in a smile, voice, God. And you, he said, the sheep will know my voice, and we pray it every day, and we keep on knowing you, Lord. We keep on praying, we have a relationship, God, and just have something special, God. We know it's a special bond to be a child yes, of God. Amen. Today, God. Thank we you know it's a special Lord. privilege to be a child of God today, God. We want to thank you for everything you do, God. We pray for Robert this morning as he brings a message. Give us the message we need this morning, God. So we just want to thank you for your son, Jesus, this morning, God. We want to thank you for that precious blood in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Roy. Tears in heaven, no sorrows given. All will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness. All will be gladness when we shall join that happy band. No tears in heaven there, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears in heaven there, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known.
three teen. Three teen. But glad reunion day.
The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Uh, so we, that's what we're supposed to do. And so just uh, uh, we'll look forward to we'll always look forward to that. That's always a blessing. So we do that. And I reckon that's everything. Unless I've got something, Stan, we'll take a phone from right quick. Let's try number 298. I'm not sure we've done this. We might, if we have, we've done it once. <laughs> so this may go off all right. right.
passing away as the light of a flower. But everybody needs to blossom someday. We'll bloom as a flower in the master's bouquet. Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet. Beautiful flowers that will never decay. Gathered by angels and carried away. Forever. When we'll be gathered together as angels, transplanted to bloom in the master's bouquet. Yep. Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet, beautiful flowers that will never decay. Gathered by Oh, the country 
Turn the cars up and just all kinds of stuff. But I'm glad to see them this morning. It's good to have y'all back. It's good to see Miss Rhonda back. She's been missing in action here for a bit. It's good, good to have her back with us this morning. In John chapter 6, verse 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Amen. What a promise from God. Uh, yeah, you know, that's, right, that's, gee, right. that's a red letter word. You know, like that's a promise from God. Yeah. What a promise God has given us yeah. that if we come to Him and surrender yeah. our heart to Him, He will in no wise yeah. cast us out. Aren't you glad yeah. this morning? Yeah. Praise God. I'm glad I don't yeah. have to be good enough yeah. to get into the kingdom right. of God. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to be sinless yeah. to get into yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to be perfect yeah. to get into the kingdom of God. Aren't you glad this morning? Praise God that He saw this. To reach down to that place where he was at and make a way for you to spend the eternity with him in glory. Yes, thank, thank, you, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. thank you, Lord. Thank you for the promises of God. Yes, amen. Amen. In the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> All that the Father giveth me well. shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no, no wise way. cast out. Amen. For I came down from heaven, oh, you, not to do mine own will, That's right. but the will of him, of him that sent me. Listen, I want to tell you this morning, Jesus Christ's will was not to suffer and die and bleed That's right. and go through the agony that he went through was not his will That's right. that he would suffer. On that old cross it was not his will that he would be pierced in his side. It was not his will that that crown of thorns be shoved down on his head. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. And what it was the will of God, of the God of glory. Amen. The will of God, the God of glory. Amen. That our sins would be bought and paid for yeah. on that old rugged cross. Amen. I'm glad this morning. Oh. I'm glad we don't have to suffer the wrath of God for our sin debt because Jesus Christ paid that debt on the cross of Calvary. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again the last day of all. That's right. Listen, I want to tell you, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, you got glory to look yeah, glory. Amen. If you belong to yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, there's going to be a great reunion yeah, right. day. If you belong yeah, to the Lord Jesus Lord. Christ this morning, you're in the glory land way, yeah. heaven for glory this morning because you belong yeah. to Him. Because your sins were paid for on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus Christ died on that old rugged cross to make a way for us to spend eternity yes. with him in glory. Aren't you glad this yes. morning? Yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Amen. And I will raise him up again at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for the day. Thank God, you. I thank you for your many blessings on us yeah. this morning. I thank you, Father, for the promises that we have in the Word of God. I thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. And thank now, God, you. I pray this morning that you'll fill us with the Holy Spirit of God as we look into your Word this morning. God, help us 
to rightly divide it. We'll get that from it that we're in need of. And I pray this morning, God, you'll come in this place, moving about this house, touching the hearts and the lives of each and every one of these that's here this morning. And I pray, God, this morning, if there's one here that don't know you for the free part of sin, I pray, God, today be the day that come and know you before it's too late. I pray, God, this morning that you just fill me with the Holy Spirit and just hold me up and speak through me the words you won't say. And God, I'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. Oh, what a wonderful God we have. I thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 As I was thinking about these verses and studying this week and reading this week, I thought there in verse 44, I read all those other verses just to get down to verse 44. Verse 44 says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up the last day. Sometimes we've seen <coughs> excuse me. We've seen people come into church and we've seen them sit back here and we've seen them uh, sit back there in the pew and then when the invitation's given they get up and they come to the altar and they pray the little prayer and they go out the back doors back there and you don't ever see them again can't find them with a search warrant. I want to tell you I'm afraid they weren't drawn by the Spirit of God. Yeah. I want you to know this morning I could go back there and get you by the shirt sleeve and drag you up here to the altar and pray with you till my eyes turn green. But I want to tell you it won't do you a bit of good unless the Spirit of God draws you. I want to tell you this morning you can't be saved without the Spirit of God. You can't, be, you can't live the kind of life that God wants you to live without the Spirit of God living within you to lead you and guide you the way that you ought to go. You have to have the Holy Ghost of God living within you this morning in order to keep you living the kind of life that God expects us to live from day to day. There's no man cometh unto the Father except he that sent me draw him. Right. I thought about man's inability to come to a God. We, we're unable to come to God. We have an inability. Well, you know what? Uh, people might say, well, I can walk. I can get up and I can go to church and I can make my way down to the altar. I can do anything I want to do. I can go however I want to go, wherever I want to. I'm able to get up and go to church. But it's not my ability that gets me saved. It's not my ability that makes me able to come to God. It's the drawing of the Holy That's Spirit right. that makes me able to come to God. I'm, I'm able to come and I'm able to walk and I'm able to get out here and I'm able to pray. I can I can talk so I can seek out. I can I can pray and ask God to do all kinds of things and I can pray for those that are sick and afflicted and I can I can do all those things. It's not my inability to do those things. I'm able to do those things, but it's not in my nature to do those things. When I'm lost and undone without God, the world out there does not have that nature within them. The reason we don't come to God is because we're of that nature. It's not a mental, it's not a physical problem. We're able to get up and come. It's not a mental problem, Brother Steve. I, re, I know, like you said, I knew about God from the time I was like just that. a little bitty boy. Yeah. I knew that there was a God. And I knew that He was He right. was the God of all glory. And I knew all kinds of things right. about Him. I heard all kinds right. of things about Him growing wow. up. My mother and daddy talked about Him in the right. home. My daddy would, yeah. uh, my mother and my daddy both were a good people and they knew that God was in charge of everything that went on and they talked about God and I knew a lot about God. I had a big head knowledge of God. You know what? I could pick up the Word of God and I could read it and I could do all those things but I didn't have that heart knowledge. Praise right. God. I had a head knowledge. Yeah. That's right. It was not in my nature right. to come to God. I thought about that. I thought about how, how odd... How odd people are. Jeremiah, over seven, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, he says, The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, that's the nature of the unregenerated man. That's the nature of those that are lost and undone without God. Their heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's the nature. I thought about how difficult, how much difference there is in natures. A sheep has a nature to follow the leader and eat grass and 
be very quiet and very docile and get him to do anything he wanted to. Yeah. But the wolf, on the other hand, yeah. is barbaric and vicious yeah. and mean and untrainable or virtually untrainable. Maybe it can be done, but it's virtually impossible to take away that nature. That's the difference in the nature. That's right. And it's the same thing with man. Yeah. The lost man without God has that same barbaric nature yeah. without any, any ability to come to God right. on his own. It's not a physical thing. It's not a mental thing. Right. It's a nature thing. A mother with a child. Listen, I could give you a I could give you a big sharp butcher knife and tell you to stab your child. You can't do it. You couldn't do it. It's not in your nature to do that. It was not in our nature to come to God. That's right. We had to be drawn to That's God. Right. It's not in our nature to be that. Listen, I thought about that. I thought, well, if it's not in our nature, how do we go about doing that? How do we go about becoming Christians? How do we get there? It's through the mysterious power of the Word of God Amen. that we come to the saving knowledge right. of the Lord Jesus right. Christ. We Amen. transfer that head knowledge down to heart oh, knowledge right. and we become convicted and then we repent of our sins and then we turn to Jesus Amen. Christ and He'll save us for it. This, how do we, why is it that we don't come? Why is it that the, the church is not full of people? Why is it that they've turned their back on God? Why is it that they won't accept the word of God? Why is it? Because they're obstinate, hard-headed, and self-willed, and they only think about what's good for them at the present time, not what's down the road. You know what? People are selfish, self-willed, hard-headed, stiff-necked, and every other kind of oh. word that you can think yeah. of for them. You know what? Praise God. That's the way the world is today. Right. Yeah. And it's been that way. Yeah. From the beginning of time. Amen. It's not in our nature to want to come to Jesus. We're hard headed and stiff necked and unconcerned and disrespectful to the Word of God. I don't know about y'all, but I had no respect for the Word of God Amen. until I became a Christian. Amen. I had no respect for the church, Amen. for God's church. Didn't worry about that. Didn't think nothing about That's right. that until I became a Christian. That's right. You know what? We're hard-headed and self-willed. Our eyes are dark. And listen, over in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, listen to what it says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of the calling and what is the, uh, the riches of the glory of his, in his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. You know what? It's because of the mysterious power Amen. that's engrafted in these words, praise God, that we come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We get, we get, we get rid of that obstinate nature. We get rid of that darkened, uh, darkened nature that we have, and we change. You know what? Uh, the world loves everything except the Word of God. Right. The world loves everything except that Amen. which belongs to God. They, they love sports. They love entertainment. They love uh, uh, good eating places. They love all those things. Yeah. They love all the things of the world more than the things of God. If you go to a ball game this morning, if you went to a ball game this morning, they'd sit out there and rain and holler and wave and shout and jump up and down and, right. and oh look at little John come on run 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 hit that ball jump on the umpire jump on the coaches all kind of stuff but you know what when it comes to God when it comes to Jesus Christ where they at where they at the church houses are empty the seats are empty where they're at. Their nature is to be out there in the world. We have to have that nature changed. And the way that nature is changed is by the mysterious power of the Word of God. Amen. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. We get in church. We get under the Word of God. Amen. We begin to pray. We begin 
Thank you, Jesus. God. That's how our nature's changed. Not that we can change it. We can't change that old nature that's in us, Brother Steve. We still got that old sin nature. Isn't that's, right. that's the reason we have trouble from time to time. It's the reason we have trouble from day to day with the things that the world puts in the way, the things that the devil puts out there in the way, the temptations that the world offers up for us today. We have trouble because we're not close enough to God. <coughs> and we're close to Him. And we have that Spirit living in us. Right. And what? It overrides that old sin nature that's in us. We, we get that by being in the, word, in the Word of God, being in the house of God, being in prayer, having faith, living for the Lord. Uh, the Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it's, a power. it's the power of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Praise God. It Bless is the Jesus. power. It's the mysterious power of God that draws men to him. Amen. And we get under the word of God. And we get in the word of God. And we get under the preaching of the word of God. And we're convicted and we're drawn. That's when we begin to be drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen. He goes on to tell us there that over in, uh, uh, in, Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about that, uh, that uh, enlightening again. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. They're alienated from the Word of God because of the blindness of their heart. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's that nature. That's that old sin nature Amen. that abides in every one. But we become enlightened when we get in the Word of God. We come and become enlightened when we get under the Word of God. Uh, Titus chapter two verse eleven says, "For the grace of God, that, uh, 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 the grace of God appeareth to all men, that bringeth salvation appeareth to all men, teaching us, teaching us." Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we're to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's right. Looking for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Our God who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Good works. That's a different nature, isn't it? Listen, which our nature changes. As we become close to God. And John, 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, This then is the message that I declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we walk in darkness and say we have fellowship with him, we lie. The truth and the truth's not in us. Well, praise God, we get under the word of God and we get in the house of God and we get in prayer yeah. and we begin to have Thank faith you. and we begin to seek. That's when the Spirit of God is drawing us. And then our hearts change. When the Spirit of God draws you and you come to the point that you repent of your sins, then you're changed. In the, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 17, I believe it is. Maybe it's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Wherefore, whosoever uh, believeth on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is a new creature. I, I don't remember what the word's exactly, but you become a new creature. The old man's gone. Old man's passed away. No longer that same old nature. No longer that same old character. Wherefore, if any man, any man, yes. what Jesus Christ is capable of saving the worst sinner in the world. That's right. But he has to be drawn Amen. by the Spirit of God before he comes to the place of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He said, No man cometh me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up. At the last day. What a promise. Man. I will raise him up at the last day. And when our will is, when that old nature is changed and, and we become the child of the king, we become a Christian and we our nature is to follow God. Our nature is to serve. You're here this morning because it's now in your nature. You're changed. You're a new creature. Old man's passed away. No longer that same old man that we used to be. Steve sings that song about not being that same old person anymore. Not going to them same old places. Not doing them same old things. Right. A new creature. We're new in, a, in Christ Jesus. Man. And that's why you're here this morning. We're here because we belong to him. Because we're living in him. And he's living in us. And it says he'll raise us up at the last day. 
over in 1 Thessalonians. He's talking about the rapture over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I'd love to read these verses. I could just yeah, probably amen. read them every time we come together here. And starting in verse 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. I'm glad we have hope That's in right. the Lord Jesus Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. What a promise. Thank you, Lord, for your promise. Amen. He said, I will raise them up Amen. at the last day. At the last day. One day we're going to hear the trumpet sound. We'll hear the voice of the archangel. And we'll see the ground burst open. And those old saints that have died and gone on before us, we'll see them rise first. And we which are alive and remain, we may not be here, but somebody will be, which are alive, will be caught up together with them in the air. That's a good place to stop. Brother Murray, come with a verse of song. You may be here this morning. You may just need to do business with the Lord. If you are, the altar's open. The altar's always open here. It's open when you come in. It'll be open when they're singing. It'll be open when they're singing, preaching. No matter what's going on, the altar's open. You need to do business with God. I'm glad to tell you this morning that he's always listening. He's always standing, listening for the call of his children. You know what, when we were, we were parents and, and 